this is Ranger Kidwell Ross, uh, editor of World Sweeper, and we're at the 2015 MPE. We're looking at this uh, Masco Sweeper, and we're looking at Ellie, Eddie Salzano, <laughs> and uh, he is the sales and parts manager for Masco, and is going to talk to you about uh, what we're looking at here in terms of a sweeper. Thanks, Eddie. Okay, what we're looking at here is a sweeper that is now planned to be under $60,000. What I wanted to incorporate is something that didn't have to be used anymore, and that's a four-cylinder, 65-horsepower motor, which I think is overpowered for any type of parking lot sweeper. So I maximized a three-cylinder Kubota at 1,600 RPMs, and then whatever remained with more power needed, a condensed or enlarged or outlet blow side uh, of and our how large is that blower? I'm out. sorry. How large is that coming out? Right now is a 24-inch six fan. Uh huh. And so right now it, I'm pushing 1,600 RPMs. I pretty much have it at a regenerative air where you don't have to bleed the air anymore. Okay. And uh, for those who do want to have different situations of sweeping, you still have that opportunity to make that adjustment. And um, I think if if I make this a 10-inch hose, I could completely eliminate the air bleeding box. But I'm going to leave it at that and see where that takes us. Mm -hmm. But uh, at 1,100 RPMs, I am about filling up the hopper with the leaves at this position, going about five miles an hour. And uh, I eliminated things as far as uh, uh, beacon lights hang on top of the cab, posts that may vibrate that hold a little three-inch strobe. I incorporated the hazard lights behind the grill in front of the truck, mm -hmm. visible from two miles away, and that goes for the same for the hazard light in the back of the hopper door. Talk about um, the uh, the fact that your intake is at the rear of the sweeper. That's a Masco trademark. Uh, yes. And uh, why why is that? What are the advantages of having that versus uh, something else? Well, I'm not saying that the center head doesn't sweep. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it does, and so it's always been an argument that I've always had with people. But this right here, I think that uh, we can make the best out of it because it's easy to remove, replace, to to change the rubber out, make changes, work on it. You know, versus raising the truck up on a center head, trying to pull it out, and then you know, it, I've done it before. It's kind of a hassle. You know, sometimes you need two forklifts if it's an Isuzu. But uh, other than that, I think uh, they finally won me over on the number head, so I made best out of it. Um, we just run a half by six rubber, and then we have two corner deflectors, and then I uh, have air diverters in the box to keep from blasting flat on the ground and diverting the air at a radius going across the head, which also helps of throttling up all the time to try to get something pushed over to the other side of the head to get sucked up. So at a lower RPM, it getting diverted. You don't need all a lot of air pushing through there to get that wet leaf up or get that problematic uh, mm -hmm. sticky item that's on the surface over to the cross of the head. So that part, I am secure. I feel great about it. And another one highlight that I like about is how quiet this thing is. Um, yesterday they had uh, the vacuum cleaners going across here, going uh, back and forth, and I wanted to fire it for some people, and I was real nervous about it, so I did. And so. What made me feel pretty good about it, you could hear the vacuum cleaner more than you could do the engine. And so what I did to incorporate that uh, noise reduction is I tied the auxiliary engine to the truck exhaust. Safe to do, uh, no hazards, you know, uh, it doesn't affect the smog of the truck. All right, so here we are with the hopper as we're walking around before I show you the exhaust. It, we've always been known for a three yard solid hopper capacity. What's it made of? Uh, this is full stainless steel, so it's corrosion free, lifetime pretty much, as Mike Dyke we used to say. Uh -huh. Another legendary of the, the company of Masco, but um, here it, it holds a solid, solid three yards. The screen and the top of the hopper, maybe you have five inch cap versus a larger cap if I've seen in others. And it's got a spray uh, system that, re that reduces dust as well on top of the screen, pretty much on the path of the uh, inlet of the 10 inch tube. Um, it has a long drop door, so nothing drops down on top of the bumper. So when you dump in a six-foot dumpster, it clears it, no problem, no debris in between the sweeper and the dumpster. Uh, we use a full urethane hose, very hard to puncture with the, even with the razor knife. You can stand on top of it, almost put your belly with the knife against it, and it is, it is very hard to puncture. So this also eliminates the sales of 10-inch hose with Masco. So you know, it's kind of pricey, but it's there available for those who want to buy it. It's, it really works, and so you don't need a. So you're talking about long term. Uh, long term. Cost effective yeah, it's not, short term. It's, it, even if you had a, a, another sweeper other than ours, and you had a, an issue with hitting bumpers, hitting leaf springs, and it, it, it has a lot of resistance of it poking holes, and then uh, 
and shredding and then just completely coming apart as you as you've seen the other ones but to me a good quality holes at 25 bucks a foot it goes a long way so I think as the customer when he buys rubber he should buy 80 durometer rubber and he should buy urethane hose and they won't have to be changing it frequently like they have 40 60 durometer rubber. that's right think of the labor that right. it takes to replace right. so, the frequency so you know as far as the customer and making it easy for them that's what it much by pretty pretty much did here and uh, if you notice the exhaust of the truck it comes out here I have heat shields here have the exhaust, the first exhaust for the muffler coming in, a flex tube. It bends down at a 90, comes out at a 45, and, and boils right into the truck exhaust. And that right there makes it very, very quiet. And like I said, I can sweep at 1100 RPMs, and the only thing you could probably hear is maybe the blower that's louder than the engine. Well, let's talk and, about that blower. Yeah, that, that, that is a blower that uh, has been with Masco since day one. Um, if, if it's not greased, it's supposed to. I mean, you, if you don't grease that thing, the, the variants are going to fry. You could over grease it just as bad as under greasing it and they're going bad on you. Mm -hmm. So, like the, the rule of thumb on these is when you have grease coming out the lip seal, you don't need to grease it. When you see it to be dry, then you grease it. Mm -hmm. And so, as doing a daily grease job on a bearing, especially with a high speed bearing, it's not recommended. Other bearings that are spinning at lower RPMs, this thing is screaming at high RPMs. And so it's very sensitive more than anything. It has a slow RPM uh, bearing. But it's a bearing that I've been using for about 10 years now. It's made by Pure. And it's, it's inexpensive. It's a $35 bearing versus a big $70 bearing. And again, it's a 5H two bolt flange. Very basic. You can get them pretty much anywhere at any bearing supply house. And again, that's a Pure bearing. That goes for anybody who spins a clean air blower or high speed bearing in any part of your blower because I've tried every bearing that's in the market for the past 20 years and that works and so another feature that I started doing I started undercoating 3M body shoulds on the inside of the fender I'm not using a rubber mat you could pretty much throw anything in there you want to um, I also eliminated the backpack rack giving us more space on the other side and uh, stretch the fender longer so you can apply a backpack and maybe a gas can or even a handheld blower and so i think to me if i was sweeping i'd rather be doing this instead of this right. and then i have a bad shoulder so <laughs> other than that considering that i think it's it's more practical to have your blower sitting here where it's easy to get to it's boxed in it's not going to fall out and you don't have to worry about strapping it and tying it down and it, it and it has more space to also apply a gas can and a, uh, or, or another uh, handheld blower. Mm -hmm. um, How about the curb room? So the curb room, it's a 26-inch uh, spread. It's a poly steel. It's still, nothing's changed. That's been original since day one. And it's a four bolt hole pattern. And then um, we have an actuator that raises and lowers uh, the broom as well. Mm -hmm. You could bring the pitch of the broom out further if you want to. It depends what your, your sweeping situation is. Sometimes you could be close to a wall. I need to push that thing in. I loosen up two half inch bolts, get it in there, and I could bring it out, bring it in, whatever the circumstances are. We have uh, three holders for the clean air blower. Everybody, and the reason why I say three is because for the past 30 years I've been with Mazda Sweepers, I've seen people want it here. This is where it started. David Dyke incorporated one over here and started it here, and they like that. And then, so what I did by uh, eliminated some uh, some tubing here that held the light, the hazard light here. I gained more space. What? And so I just kind of ran out of time. But one thing I thought would be a good idea is put this blower assembly back over here and put it in a holster, like you see it there. Now you could transport and you go 60 miles an hour, and that that thing's not going to be whistling up in the air and then banging against your your tank. Makes sense. And you mount onto a. What is, what is this chassis? Uh, this is a 1500 uh, Silverado. Mm -hmm. We do Chevrolet GMCs, we do F-150s, Toyota Tundras um, uh, work as well, but they're, they're being almost impossible to get. But this right here, is, it's just a lower truck. It's not real high, it's compact, has space behind the seats. Um, it has bucket seats, it, it's, a, it's a real practical truck. It maneuvers well, has a good turning radius, and uh, it, it, it accommodates our, our uh, our control panel, which mm -hmm. is the stainless steel we Take a look throttle. at the control panel. Let me get some of these items out of the way for you. So here it's we are. It's a trade show. That's where everybody puts oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, chest. yeah. And so as you can see, I by putting that three-cylinder 
uh, Kubota back there. Now we're going, we're stepping back from all these fuel injected ECUs. To me, it could be problematic sometimes. It's hard for the customer to troubleshoot. Sometimes by just diagnosing a, a light indicator coming on, then the phone call comes to the person who sold them the sweeper. They, they have to diagnose it. Sometimes that question doesn't get answered. Then you have to take your time and then call the dealer or call whoever provided mm -hmm. the motor to help troubleshoot something that could, could be complicated. Not all times, but I've experienced it and it could be time consuming where if I'm trying to help build this sweeper or trying to redesign something that it just takes away time of, of looking after the parts department, see how it's doing, looking at the service department, see how it's doing, answering questions, seeing the guys, what they need, and also, you know, managing, you know, changes, if they're doing it correctly, and, uh, and listening to what changes they think that it needs to be done. I'm always open ears with these guys, and I give hats off to my guys who help do this because they really, they crash bang, and then really bust their knuckles to get things done when I ask them to. But, and, uh, and you, in terms of parts, you sell at Masco. Now, Masco is located in California. We're located in California. Um, lo another thing that I incorporated, which really makes me busy as well, is that we started um, working with street sweepers. I worked on pythons. I worked on challengers. I worked on huskies, Mr. Brooms, way back when. And then um, I also fabricate and do um, installation of floorboards, upper rollers. I fabricate cogs. I uh, retail hydraulic components, motors, couplers, everything to make that elevator to go round and round, chains, we, we do it there. I've never advertised because I've been real busy with my local customers that I've sold street sweepers to as well. And uh, I'm quite busy just with the local street sweepers that I have coming in for a daily repair. Some guys have a fleet of seven Huskies, Pythons, you know, 435s, you know, we've done all that as far as service and supplying them parts that I also make and uh, keep ourselves busy. So the shop is quite busy when we're not building sweepers, servicing Masco sweepers, we're always servicing the street sweepers as well. So it's, it's a, it's a full-time day and it, uh, from Monday to Friday, it's quite busy. So it's not like I get home on 4.30 on Friday and get to eat dinner with my family. That's almost impossible now, so <laughs> I miss it. And so anyhow, but I love what I do and I love what the company does. And it, it's also another thing that to tell people, hey, we could do other than build parking lot sweepers. And to me, you know, building parking lot sweepers for so long, then my eye starts looking at the street sweepers, and then I see that as a challenge, and there I go. Start taking it on, and Larry supported me. Larry's always been into that, and so without his support, and I couldn't have the opportunity of learning and knowing the street sweepers and see how they work, and the mechanical part of it, which made me interested, and then here we are today, and sometimes I feel that uh, maybe I'm applying too much time over there, but I break it even, so I uh -huh. make everybody happy here. But well, that, that, that's pretty uh, much it. And that, that's got to help on the parking lot side, too, to see oh, yeah. the different things in yeah. street sweeping. Yeah, it also leads to uh, other customers that are interested uh, into the street sweeping business other than being in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I go, uh, I think there's an opportunity there. I don't think there's much as competition there's parking lot. And I go, I always tell them that get yourself in a used street sweeper, be an owner operator for a while, try it, and see how you like it. So I have customers that have you know three air machines three brew machines now and then then still have their their company and they, they, they keep it to a point where they have control of it and it's not pulling their hell out hair out so I, I think it's a good thing too so I mean that's also incorporating people starting to get in the street sweeping business as well well thank you very much uh, tell me uh, how to get hold of me I have the same phone number from way back when it's 1-800-345-1246 we all answer the phones. That was just one person answers as a receptionist. We all hear that phone ring. You, you're going to either hear me, Lisa, Eben, David, sometimes maybe Larry, but uh, Mike is now retired with us. And uh, good luck to you, Mike. I love him like a brother. And I, I, I talk to him every day. He's my best friend, like. And um, I wish he was here. And so, anyway, other than that, um, I thank you for the interview. All right. Thank you very much, Eddie. All right.